What's up, everybody? Welcome into the show. On today's show, we haven't talked to our guy, Brian Smith, in a while. It's an SEC recruiting update. There's been a lot going on. we got a lot to discuss. Who's winning? Who's losing? Who's landing the big names? We'll talk all about it. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is up, everybody? Welcome to Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Just shout out to our everydayers for free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. And this episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. They are covering all of our recruiting episodes. LinkedIn Jobs these days. Every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. LinkedIn Jobs can help you find the right people faster and for free. Go post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. He's Brian Smith. He is our Locked On Recruiting Insider. And Brian, it is a busy, busy time of year. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time to join us. It is the busiest two weeks of the year for me because all these kids are about to commit at the same time. It's about to be <laughs> recruiting Palooza. Yeah, it's it, it's insane how much activity we've had there, here these last couple of weeks. So a lot of visiting, a lot of traveling, a lot of coaches hosting, a lot of kids. But I, I kind of want to start here. Um, you know, in this day and age with uh, NIL and, you know, basically the ability to, you know, get a walk on on an NIL deal, pay for their scholarship, the transfer portal error. Where are we with roster limitations these days? Because it used to just be you could only sign 25 kids and that was it. And all that's going to change here in the last couple of years. To my knowledge, unless they've changed it again, the NCAA, to my knowledge, you can sign more than 25. That used to be the number. And that's good. That's bad. But one of the reasons I think they went to that, there's been a lot of complaining from seven on coaches, from high school coaches. Everybody just wants the portal kid. They're passing up my high school kid. Well, you made a meeting eligibility for transfers. So it's your fault. So <laughs> you guys wanted it. You can't have it both ways. And that's that's the deal. So some schools like Louisville take over 30 transfers because they can't get the high school kids they want. They get a bunch of three star guys where somebody like Georgia just kind of picks and chooses from the portal. And they'll take 25 high school kids in a class because they're getting the guys they want. So every program is a little different. It's a great question. I don't want to do the research paper on it because it'd be 500 pages. But it is wild because every school is different. It really just depends on what level of high school kid you can get, how you do it. But you can load up in one class if you want. Yeah. They, they, if you know, wait like two or three years and all of a sudden you got all these kids at once. You know, school like Mississippi State might do that because they're not going to be good every year. I'm sorry. They're not. Why not do it that way? You got 35 seniors on your team. <laughs> you could be a team that could beat Georgia. that could beat Bama or LSU. Well, that's the thing. It's, you know, it's a numbers game. It was like you were limited to the 85 scholarship players, but it was like if 20 scholarship players all leave through the transfer portal and I didn't bring that many back in the transfer portal, then I should uh -oh. be obligated to <laughs> add that to my signing class, right? I mean, I should be able to sign 35, 40 kids. So uh, very interesting in how this thing is is just ever evolving. And it's funny that, uh, you know, you can't even keep up nowadays. I, every day I tell somebody something about college football and they go, I didn't know that. I'm like, dude, keep up. It's like everything's <laughs> changing every day. How, one other thing I wanted to talk about, and it's funny, you know, we talk about paying players and, and let's be real. Come on. Blue Chips was a movie a long time ago about this very thing. But in the realm of paying players and, and, and paying recruits, this thing has evolved so much now, Brian, where it's not just paying a kid to come play at your school now we're seeing a world of their kids getting paid to come visit a school i mean now it's like just for my presence on your campus like what are we doing here uh it is not my favorite subject but at the elite level the programs i know i was talking to you off air like florida florida state and miami combined unless something changed here in the last hour or so from this past weekend which they all hosted multiple official official visits goose egg no commitments. Now, I want you to think about that. Miami, I don't care how much you like these schools, hate them, whatever. Miami, Florida, Florida State. Really? It's because of that. These kids are getting bags just to show up at a lot of places. And there's still decisions to be made, too. But some of these schools are taking like 8, 12 kids in for a visit in a weekend and not getting anybody? Really? I mean, that's crazy to me. So a lot of it is the NIL stuff. And just to throw it out there, I know, Chris, you're going to be shocked by this. A lot of parents think their kids are worth a lot more than what the schools do. I know you're you're going to be just completely blown away by that. 
<laughs> and that's one of the things that's also a problem. Like I've never met a parent that was realistic about their kid's ability and it's never going to change. So that's a problem as well. And a lot of the NIL money at certain schools, I won't name any, but you and I were talking about a certain SEC school. They've already spent a lot of it for this year because they went and got the kids they wanted, like the elite of the elite. And now these other kids come in and visit. Where's my money? Well, if you want to be here, that's great. But otherwise, go on down the road. We don't have that for everybody. And it well, causes a lot of rifts. So NIL is a wild, wild ride. Well, and think of the the comments we've seen recently from some head coaches out there. Just this week, we we saw Steve Sarkeesian on, on the uh, podcast with Joel Klatt, where he said, you know, NIL should be the last thing we're talking about with, with kids. And granted, everybody goes, oh, yeah, boo, Steve Sarkeesian. But he's just giving you his real honest opinion. Brian Kelly, got, Brian Kelly got killed a few weeks ago when he said, like, look, what happened to come place football at LSU? Because it's great football tradition. You're going to get a great education. We're going to get you ready for the NFL. Like, all this stuff is like, you know, the after the conversation where it starts with, what are you paying me to come here? And I do think, you know, a lot of coaches, it feels like, oh, yeah, the big rich coach doesn't want to. It's not that they don't want to pay the player. It's like we're losing focus here on what this is supposed to be about, right? That's the problem. Um, from what I'm told, the majority of the time, not saying all, parents come with recruit, you know, whatever level player he is. They want to talk money first. How about you meet everybody first? How about you see the academics before that? How about you tour the campus? If I'm going to give you a bunch of money, I might want to know you personally. What are we doing? So there are a lot of people that are clueless, and I know flat out this is not opinion. That has turned off people in these things they call athletic departments and football coaching rooms. And certain kids are taken off the board because of the parents, because of how the attitudes is with the kid. Like, hey, I know I'm going to get all this money. They're talking to the guys in the locker room at the school, they'll tell the coach, like, look, we don't want this dude. You want to ax yourself? Come in talking about demands for money. Goodbye. Uh, especially the elite programs. I know Kirby's talked about this a lot. Like, they use NIL for certain kids and whatnot. But let's not kid ourselves. He wants a locker room environment. That's why Nick left. He hates this stuff in Alabama. He hates it. You're screwing up the locker room and the chemistry. Like, Chris, like what you're talking about, it's better not to take the elite kid, tell him to hit the road, Take another guy that you developed and wants to be a part of your system. You think Alabama and Georgia are going to fall off if they continue to do that? Probably not. Yeah. It just it just feels like w this thing is going to hit a wall eventually, right? Like, oh, 100%. You know, how, how about let me tell you about our great business administration degree you could get? You know, it's like, let's get to that. Exactly. But on the other side, look, there's some kids that will not go pro. This might be their one opportunity to make some money and, you know, enjoy living the college life and put a, a couple thousand grand in the bank but like they may you know those kids who may not this down the road they may just get an invite to an nfl training camp and then get cut and never play football again so i get maximize while you can but also understand you also have to take into account it's still about playing college football it's still about getting a degree and you know that part of it is part of this too so it's i don't know man it's, it's like we're it's these big ex waves of extreme you know uh yes. cases here throughout all this stuff I am anxious to see some kind of limitations on it, but I don't know how you can do it because every state's going to have different laws. I do not like the NCA, but there's nothing they can do because every state is looking literally to give their school an advantage over their rival down the road because the governor or whatever politicians in that state that do it for state you are going to get more votes and they know it. Right. No, seriously. Like it's, yeah. it's a bidding war. If you do not support the local school, Oh, you're done. You have no chance to get reelected. So like the, the what's going on in Florida, the Florida state suing the ACC, anybody not on board with that in the Tallahassee area, those guys are done. <laughs> so that's just the world we live in. It's a popularity contest. Well, we've got a big wave of a lot of kids committing and we're going to get into uh, a couple of the big schools here. who've got some big commits as of late more with Brian Smith recruiting conversation locked on SEC right after this. Well, first, I want to remind you guys, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Look, passion, drive, and patience, it is the winning formula for championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Whether it's superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with that eBay guaranteed fit, 
your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning uh, rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is going to be easy to make your car that MVP and bring home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay. Guarantee fit. Only available to U.S. customers. It's ebaymotors.com. As we dive back into it with our buddy Brian Smith, our Locked On Recruiting Insider. Brian, let's dive into it. And by the way, thank you for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to everydayers. Check out Locked On Sports today for your second listen as soon as you finish up with us. Uh, Let's start with Alabama. They are now the highest ranked SEC class in the 24-7 sports composite for 2025. 17 commits already. It's a little high. I'm not used to seeing Alabama have this many kids committed this early on and certainly it's a different approach from Saban and I'm seeing a lot of I mean they've got a ton of four stars but seven three stars already just seems a little again it's Kalen DeBoer it's going to be a different approach and he hasn't even coached a game yet it's just a little bit different they did just add a couple of O-linemen Jackson Lloyd big uh, four-star O-lineman six foot seven uh, three sport athlete they had a four-star corner Chuck McDonald out of modern day and they also stole uh, Keelan Russell quarterback out of uh, away from SMU so Give me a thought on any of those guys and kind of what Alabama's been doing. The, the offensive tackle situation is important. Bama dominated in the trenches for years, and it's why they were in the title game seemingly every season, but not all, not quite. Getting kids like that is key for them. They're going to run a little bit different offense, a little more pass happy, but he's, he can play left tackle. They'll take that kid every time. He's from Carmichael, California. Uh, getting McDonald from modern, modern day, arguably the best program in the country over the last 40 years, certainly is helpful. And they also – they got another kid, too. They just got a defensive tackle out of Mississippi, London Simmons, who's a big-time player. So they're doing just fine. Um, I don't think anybody's ever going to match what Saban did for that long on the recruiting trail. And as we both know, Bama fans have blinders, so there will be gnashing of teeth. <laughs> it's just true. There's no fixing what Bama fans are used to. So uh, I talked to a buddy of mine that's a Bama fan yesterday – his only concern is they're not really recruiting state, the state like they used to. And if they don't win right away, that that will turn people off in the state of Alabama. Yeah, and, and we'll get to Auburn in a little bit, but it's like Auburn has a chance to steal, you know, like a bunch. majority of the top kids from the state. And they and look, that was coming because there was going to be a little bit of a transition from Saban to DeBoer. But look, sure, if DeBoer starts winning games and he goes 11 and one, 10 and two in year one, or you know, let's say they get to the playoff and win a championship. All those kids are going to come back, but it is just, it's a little odd because we're used to seeing Bama getting the number one safety in the country, the number one wide receiver in the country, the number one quarterback, the number one running back. And right now, a lot of Bama fans are celebrating, hey, we got this three-star linebacker. It's just, it's a little bit different, but this is to be expected. DeBoer's got to build his own program. I'm not real worried about it year one too much. There have been a couple of hiccups with kids. They didn't contact as fast as they should. Zion Grady and some other guys, but they are doing a pretty good job now. Like it just took a little longer to get going than what Saban probably would have. And they've got a broader base. Year two, the recruiting class is what I'm curious about Bama. Are they able to get the Georgia, Alabama, Florida kids that Nick used to head to head with Florida, Florida State, Miami, Auburn, and Georgia? Just a checkbox. That's where Nick made his hay. They won those five star battles against those teams for five star D linemen, corners, et cetera. If you want to completely dominate, take the players away. The other teams need to beat you. And they had kids on the bench. The other teams would have loved to have started. I don't know if that's going to happen anymore. So while he's a very good coach, I still need to see that at the end. Um, I like the players they got, but they they don't have the same girth, especially up front and whatnot. So you're right. It's it's a different approach. I'm curious to see what Bama fans think on signing day because they'll end up with a top 10 class somewhere, maybe top three. It's hard to say because they're in on a bunch of guys but it's still not going to be saving standards. Yeah. Uh, look, most of them have just been over positive. I haven't seen any Alabama fan complain about Like they get a kid to go, yeah, this kid's going to be a stud. It's like, they're just celebrating any kid they get right now. So, no, so that's to be expected. Let's switch over to Georgia. Um, they're right behind Alabama fourth overall in the country. And they've added some studs at least recently. Five-star linebacker, Zayden Walker out of the state of oh, Georgia, four-star sa- safety from to- uh, Todd Robinson. And then four-star wide receiver, Taylor Taylor. Uh, give me a thought on any of those guys. The weird one out of that is Taylor. He's from Chicago. Georgia doesn't get kids out of Chicago, but that's that's how recruiting has changed. And he's a receiver. You would think they'd get a D lineman or something, knowing Kirby. 
He's a really fast receiver that is elite. He'll play early for the dogs. And when you talk about Zayden Walker, he might be the best linebacker in the country. I know Georgia's defense is complex. They're going to find a way to get that kid on the field. Special player. Everybody in the country wanted him. I don't know of anybody that didn't have him like a top three linebacker nationally. The only problem is I don't know which spot you play him at. Uh, my spot probably would be sick on him. Uh, just put him out there and let him kind of play downhill early on. But I'm sure they'd like to get him playing Will or Mike at some point. He's just got to learn the scheme. And Georgia's scheme's pretty hard. So they're they're getting the kids they normally do. And, and on top, they just got the Garrett kid, the defensive lineman. Oh, ho-hum, another four-star, 290-pound kid that can play in their 3-4 defense. Like, they just have so many of those guys. It's They can take on attrition that other schools don't. He could have went to about any program he wanted. He lives 15 minutes from Athens, so that was kind of easy. But uh, Georgia's rolling. They'll end up with a top five class conservatively. And I would have bet that if I had to pick one school, they'll end up with the number one class. Yeah, go figure. Kirby Smart, still pretty good at that recruiting thing. He's, <laughs> he's good at Shocker. it. Shocker. Uh, let's jump over to Auburn because, man, they, they're currently sitting at no, number six overall in the, in the composite rankings for 2025. And before we talk about who Auburn's picked up recently – Let's talk about a kid that they are trending towards. Quarterback Julian Lewis, a five-star USC commit, but a lot of people are thinking he may flip to Auburn. What's the latest there? That is a wild situation. It depends on the moment of the day, what I would answer to you. I had three different conversations with people about him yesterday. Three. (laughs) So it just depends on who you talk to. Uh, The NIL thing is a big factor. Depending on who you believe, that's a seven-figure kind of deal. I mean, like, I don't know what they'll get, um, but I've heard they won over seven figure, which is crazy to me, whatever. But USC's got deep pockets. They're really after him. And, of course, Juju would fit that offense that Lincoln Riley has in Los Angeles. That's where he's committed, but Auburn's only two hours away, if that, because he's in Carrollton, Georgia. I I think he's going to end up at Auburn. They've done a great job of recruiting him, and they got a great relationship with him. The parents like it, and it's a lot easier for the parents. Let's just be honest. Plane flight or a two-hour stroll through the countryside to get to go see our kid, you know, and they they could move down. There's all kinds of ways they can make this work. And the other thing is Auburn's depth chart at quarterback is kind of wide open after this year. Peyton Thorne will be done. Nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. There's some people who think that Juju could come in and compete for the starting job. Uh, knowing Juju, I, he's pretty confident. I don't think he's too worried about where he goes. He thinks he's going to play anyway. But that's a kid that can change your program. And he would do so from a perception standpoint instantaneously if he committed. And I like Walker White. Um, no offense to Holden Garner or, or Hank Brown, but yeah, I mean that kid might come in and Lewis might come in and start immediately. And how can you not love the the true freshman receivers? I mean, we saw Cam oh, Coleman, yeah. Cam yeah. Coleman, Perry Thompson, Malcolm Simmons. I mean, they may he may come in and ride this thing out two, three years with those dudes at receiver. Like, how can you not love what they're you know loading up at wide receiver there, you know? Well, that's what he talked about and in one of his interviews recently. He's like, Cam Coleman, he goes like, that guy's, he's a difference maker. I've seen Cam play live several times. There are not many human be- beings that are built like him. He's 6'4", 200 pounds and runs like a deer. So he makes diving catches that other people think about, but they can never even remotely replicate. So he's probably their best receiver already after going through spring ball. That's bad on one level, but I mean, he's a freak too. A couple uh, more quick hitters here. Quick thought on LSU. Obviously, they're they're holding firm or strong with Bryce Underwood, the top quarterback in the country, and uh, Harlan Berry, the number two running back. They had DeCorey and more than number one wide receiver. He decommitted and then kind of came back and said, you know what, LSU's not off the table yet. They're still in play, but it seems like a lot of people are thinking this is a Texas move all the way. I've heard Texas is all in with NIL with him. Uh, they've recruited him well. He's an in-state kid from the Dallas area. If he doesn't go to Texas, so be it. But my chips are in there as well from what I've heard. Prove me wrong. That's kind of where I'm at. Now, this is recruiting, so that can certainly happen. But LSU is still going to try. Um, playing with Bryce probably wouldn't be a bad thing, I'd imagine. But I, I don't know why he committed there so early. Maybe that, that was part of the problem. And it's not like Sarkeesian doesn't have quarterbacks. Obviously, they got Arch and stuff lined up. So, that's the kids that's going to play right away. If I could only take one receiver from this class, it'd probably be DeCorian. He's elite, but we'll see. Uh, LSU's probably not going to get him, but if they did with the other in-state kids they could bring with him, that could be a top three class too. 
they've just been in a little lull here lately. But Bryce Underwood might be the best player in the country. There are several other good kids that have done a good job in state. Don't count the Tigers out. Conservatively, they have a great shot at the top five class. I, I just don't think they get enough credit because they got so many of their guys early. Yeah, and if there's one position, it seems like LSU uh, does not hurt for its wide receiver. They have cranked uh, out no. <laughs> first rounder after first rounder. Uh, one, one quick thought I do want to get when you talk about Texas, I did see they picked up a 2026 quarterback commit in Diabell. Yeah. Diabell, um, man, they're loading up. I mean, this is like elite quarterback after elite quarterback, yeah. elite quarterback. And I'm like, wait, if Arch is waiting his turn behind Quinn Ewers, I, I just see it like I, I know you want to sign an elite quarterback every year, but the dominoes start to fall here. And it's like, are all these kids really going to sit there and wait their turn behind the guy ahead of them? No, half these kids literally will transfer. Uh, I know Dia and his dad, they talked to me a little bit about Texas a little while back at OT7. They trust in what the process is under Sarkeesian, and he's proven quarterback coach. So they, I mean, it's probably not real hard to enjoy the University of Texas campus and their football. I mean, they got Lamborghinis or whatever out front. That's probably pretty impressive. I'm sure you saw that video too. It was kind of like, okay. But he's looking at it from a long-term, how do I get better standpoint? And if it doesn't work out there, Dio will have plenty of other options. But that's starting point. I think that's what a lot of these kids look at. The guy a year ahead of you ends up being really good, you leave. That's just the game. It is what it is. But Texas has a unique culture with the quarterback room. So Dia Bell and his dad decided to go with the Horns. All right. Who who has the most work to do here from the SEC? We're going to talk about that with Brian Smith. One more segment here on Locked On SEC. And as we dive back into it here on Locked On SEC, I want to remind you this episode is presented to you by our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. And look, it is very simple. When you are hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn, it's not just another job board. They are going to help you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users do not even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking at LinkedIn, you're looking at the wrong places. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours of posting. Hire professionals like a professional, and you can do that over at LinkedIn Jobs. Go post your job for free, linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Go post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, one more segment here with our buddy Brian Smith from uh, our Locked On in, uh, Recruiting Insider here. And, uh, Brian, as we kind of start to look at the numbers, look, it's early, right? I mean, it's it's late June. We still got the summer to go. And, yes, you know, the early signing period is, is in December. So still a lot of time to go here, but you kind of want to start building the foundation of your recruiting class. And you and I were talking beforehand, and I was a little bit flabbergasted when you mentioned the Florida Gators, and I said, Wait, where are they? I'm scrolling down this <laughs> list. They're not they're not in the top 50. And I got to go all the way down to 71 currently on the uh, 24-7 composite rankings. Five commits is all that's on there. Look, this is the danger when you start, you, you know, when you start saying your coach is on the hot seat. And I don't know if Billy Napier is going to last. If you're a Florida fan, I get your, your disgruntlement with him, but it's going to hurt you in recruiting because now a lot of kids out there going, I don't want to go play for that guy. It's dead man walking. I literally had one kid tell me, he goes, he's going to get fired. Like to my face. And he likes Florida, but he's like, I don't know who the staff's going to be. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so that's the problem. There's no fixing that problem until the season. And even if, you know, they start pretty well, because they play Miami first game, that'll be very telling. Two coaches that need to do something this year. So that first game is, is important for both the Hurricanes and the Gators, but Correct me if I'm wrong, but Florida's schedule is murderer's row, and they're a team that's predicted to win around six games. Uh, why would recruits be feeling good in year three that Napier will get enough wins to not only keep his job but gain momentum and get the administration to buy in on it? I mean, I don't have – if, Chris, you want to dive in and be Billy's, you know, savior <laughs> here, you jump in that fire. The only thing I brought up with Napier – is this? Yeah, the schedule is brutal. If he can get to six and six and they get to a bowl game, I would say that's 
an accomplishment. Now he's got to win a lot of these early season games because the back stretch of the schedule, oh, Brian, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's it's Georgia at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and at Florida State. I mean, that is as tough of a back five <laughs> of anybody you'll face. I don't know if I've ever seen one worse. <laughs> but the only one, the only thing I'll say is, two years ago there was some rumbling at Texas of, oh, Sark, not great. You know, start at Texas. What are we doing here? We got rid of Tom Herman for this, but he got Arch Manning. And that was the saving grace was true. just stick this thing out, arches on campus. At Florida, he got DJ Lagway there. Yes, and I did. love Lagway. The the risk you run is if you move on from Napier, you may lose Lagway. So is there just a, a prevailing thought in the back of their minds? Look, if he can get to six and six, it's an improvement. We get to a bowl game, we win the bowl game. DJ Lagway is the guy moving forward. Maybe Billy can turn this thing around. That is the argument that like Brandon Olson and I, who does Locked on Gators, have talked about that. They need in some way, shape, or form DJ to play some this year. And he's a mobile kid. So might, they might use him in a package. Maybe yeah. the quarterback goes down, he plays. There needs to be, okay, what's the hope for the future? And not you just talking about it. I need to physically see it inside the swamp. And that's hard to do playing freshmen and sophomores. But are you going to win the SEC this year? I mean, he can't say it, but the answer is no. So you might as well play some of the younger kids without getting murdered. You got to, It's a fine line. But they have to show the fan base, the administration, and especially those guys that donate very large checks, that there's something to build for or you're gone. Recruits probably, if Florida's going to have a good class, it's going to be backloaded. They're going to flip kids or kids they've stayed in the race with, see something good during the regular season, and then they commit in October. It doesn't matter when you commit. But right now, I mean, there are, what, five commitments or whatever? It's Florida. That's one of the top five jobs probably in college football. And you've got five commitments. It's all because the Billy's on the hot seat is what yeah. it is. It's a, it's a dangerous territory. Uh, one more thought here as we look back at some some teams with maybe some work to do. I'm looking at Kentucky. They rank 40th. They've got nine commits. Now, four of those are four stars, so they, they've done well yeah. there. Uh, but Mississippi State, they've got 12, but they rank 56 in the rankings. They're behind Vandy. Vandy's 52. So I just start to look at some of these schools. Ole Miss only has 12. Tennessee has 11 commits. Not saying they're all behind the eight ball, but some work to do here. And, uh, you know, we expect some of these teams to, to pick it up, particularly Josh Heupel at Tennessee. I'm curious to see how the next 10 days go. A lot of kids have commitments between the 25th and 30th of this month. Even a lot of these coaches, we think we're getting this kid. But with NIL, of course, you're dealing with 17-year-olds in general. Good luck with that. You just don't know. Heupel and a bunch of guys are waiting on these decisions. We'll, we'll see. But – you can be the GOAT or the guy that's in the outhouse real quick if two or three of your four or five-star guys that everybody expects you to get choose otherwise. Napier could be all of a sudden the guy that looks great because they're in on a, a gazillion guys. Nobody thinks they're going to get them. If he can pull off a few surprises, people might start to back the Gators a little bit too. It, it's wild with recruiting right now, man. <laughs> it is crazy, and nobody covers it better than our buddy Brian Smith. You can give him a follow on Twitter. He is at FBS Scout underscore Florida, of course, covering a lot of recruits down there all across the uh, Southeastern Conference, and he knows them all better than just about anybody out there. Brian, always appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll talk again real soon, all right? Thank you very much, Chris. All right, that's Brian Smith there of, uh, of course, uh, our Locked On Insider here on Locked On. Thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And uh, keep subscribing and checking us out. We'll have you covered all throughout this summer. Talking all the latest across the Southeastern Conference while we covered at SEC Media Days as well. And hey, for your second listen, check out uh, Locked On Sports Today. It is there for you on YouTube and the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Streaming 24-7 with all the biggest sports stories across the sports world. Again, this is Locked On SEC. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to everydayers. Come on back and check us out all next week. I'm Chris Gordy. You guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to you then.